okay. So I made a video uh, about how to use weird calculators. So let's get going. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you uh, this example. Um, okay. All right, so um, so the idea in this calculator, if you read the newsletter post, is that you can use it to try to think about um, interactions that you might have and kind of get some some numbers for them. Um, and the again, read the newsletter. Uh, there's a little bit in there about uh, the idea that you should basically that that for most people you can kind of ignore the the vaccinated people and and assume that they are they are safe. Uh, and really think about interactions between unvaccinated people. So here I'm kind of thinking about a scenario in which uh, I, uh, in this scenario, fully vaccinated, uh, I am going to uh, visit my parents um, and I'm bringing my unvaccinated husband and our two unvaccinated children. And we, in this scenario, are coming from Boston. Uh, and we are going to meet at my parents' house um, in Connecticut with my brother, and who's unvaccinated from New York, and his three-year-old uh, also unvaccinated, uh, and the parents are vaccinated. So, uh, in this kind of world that I have uh, imaginarily created, there are five unvaccinated people, three kids, and two uh, and and two adults. Um, so I I put them in here. I haven't given them any names, um, but. We're going to call them kid one, kid two, kid and kid three. Uh, and then there are two adults, adult one and adult two. Um, and so you can sort of see the way I've, I've kind of set this, set this up is the first thing we need to think about um, is uh, the kind of case rate in the home, in the home location. Um, and I've given you, you know, there's a lot of places to get that, but I've given you some data sources and I like this one um, for, uh, for case rate. So I'm going to pull that up here. Hope you can see this um, after a long time with Zoom. I still feel like I'm never that good at it. Um, but here, what I like about this is I can look in, uh, let's imagine that I'm from Middlesex County, Massachusetts. Um, and I can look at my county and we've got daily new cases um, per 100,000, um, which I'm gonna stick in, that's 26.5. So I'm gonna stick that in for, the people from Boston. And then I'm going to do the same thing for New York, Kings County. I'm going to assume my brother lives in Brooklyn. Uh, and that's 45.5. So I'm going to stick that in for him and his family. All right. So that's like the first, uh, the first step. And what's going to happen in the calculator is basically these numbers are going to be converted into some prevalence risk, right? So these are like daily numbers. Uh, and I'm going to make some assumption about uh, how many cases are detected and how long people are infectious for. So the assumption that I make, which is kind of implicit in this multiplier, um, is that we detect about half of cases uh, and people are infectious for about 10 days. So you take a daily case rate and kind of multiply it by 20. Um, and then divide by 100,000 because these are these are 100,000. So ultimately, we're going to get here. But then I'm going to assume that there are some things that you might want to modify about um, your your situation um, to make this um, to make it either safer or less safe. Like some things you can choose. So uh, so for example, um, you might choose to be tested uh, before going. I would always choose to be tested because I'm constantly getting tested. Uh, and I'm constantly making my kids get tested, so much so that last week when we went to the stop and shop testing, the person was like, oh, Penelope, you're back. I was like, okay, testing. So I'm gonna assume that I would get my kids tested, um, but let's say that it's hard for my brother to get his kid tested, um, and but maybe he's able to be tested himself. So we're mostly, we're mostly tested. And you can see when I change those things in the screen, these things moved around a little bit. And that's because I'm assuming that if you're tested, your, your risks goes down. I'm going to assume that like half of cases are detected with testing. Um, actually, in general, our tests are, are better than that. But, you know, I may not be testing precisely at that, um, at that moment. You can play around with that number if you, um, if you, if you want. Um, and then there's this thing here. This is this risk multiplier. I wanted a way in the in the calculator for people to capture the idea that some people may be higher risk than others. So 
one way in which people might be lower risk is like kids, because kids think kids are kind of lower risk than the overall population. Um, or we could say some people tell me, well, you know, my niece and nephew are spent a lot of time in, um, you know, playing with a lot of different unvaccinated kids. So maybe I think they're kind of slightly higher risk than the overall population. Um, you know, maybe my brother is somebody who kind of hasn't left his house in a year, in which case he's probably lower risk. Maybe he goes out a lot, maybe he's maybe higher risk. So I'm gonna default these for now to one. Um, but if you said, say, you know, I'm worried about my brother, I wanna give him a two, then that's gonna convert up his, um, his, his kind of implied, uh, like the, the implied chance he's bringing COVID to our gathering. Love for now, I'm gonna give him a one. Um, and then because later I'm gonna to wanna to think about serious illnesses, I'm gonna pull in hospitalization and, and death risks. Now up here, I've given you some places you can go to look, for example, um, at hospitalizations for your, and get like super detailed. So this calculator, you know, uses um, some academic research and really lets you dive into like the characteristics of people that you're bringing, even lets you list some kind of comorbidities if you wanna kind of get get into that um, and it'll run it'll run some calculator for, for you uh, and similarly there are some uh, you know death risk calculators that will do that will do the same so I have um, I put in some some numbers here with the kind of understanding that um, these are sort of average numbers and these are things you definitely want to be kind of playing around with here I've given you a little bit of a sense over here um, from that table but again there's there's like a lot more you can do if you if you get you can get into it okay so that's sort of the starting the starting point. Oh, and the other really important thing to note is I've put in a, a transmission risk here. Um, and uh, and this is because I'm imagining what we're doing is like going to my parents' house and like all like living together for a couple a couple of days. I'm going to basically put in a household what I think is the household transmission risk here, and I'm going to put it at at twelve percent. Some people think that within household transmission risk is higher than that. Um, you know, you might, if you were doing this for, some people think it's lower, um, if you were doing this, say, trying to think about in-person schooling, um, and, you know, the people were all the kids in your kid's school pod, you'd certainly want a much lower number there, um, probably well, un well under 1% based on what we know, but for now, I've kind of got, got this number here, and again, it's something you can, you can kind of play around with. Um, so then here, there's the little calculator. You actually never need to look at this um, to make this operationalized, but just so you understand what's going on under the, under the hood, I've got kind of source people and receiving people. So in my case, I've actually labeled them. And then what's in here is like for kid two, this is, there's a source from kid one and a, and a recep recipient. And what this says is that like for kid two, their chance of getting COVID from kid one uh, is the chance that kid one is infected times the um, times the the transmission rate. So this just uses some numbers from over here uh, and calculates in here. Again, this is sort of all happening in the background. You actually don't need to you don't need to to look at this um, unless you need to add, like add add more people to track people. Uh, okay, so, and then it it aggregates up to, to the results. So what we do here is I aggregate up the um, the infection risk um, for for kid one by adding kind of all the different people that they could have gotten uh, COVID COVID from, um, and then I've I've got them them added up uh, added up here, um, and. I like for those of you who are really into, into statistics, actually just adding these together isn't quite right because you can only get COVID once. Um, so if you got it from one person, you wouldn't get it from another person. Given how small these numbers are, uh, that's actually gonna not matter too much. If you wanna really get into it and do it super detailed, like please enjoy yourself. Imagine. Um, okay, so then we've added up these infection risks. And so this says something like, um, like two, two tenths of, of 1%. Um, we will notice that these numbers aren't all the same. Um, you know, in particular, the, the kid uh, from New York has a lower risk because the people they're being exposed to are these people from Boston who are coming from a place with a, with a lower risk, okay? Um, 
and the adults um, sort of similarly. And already, if you kind of go back to your to your assumptions, you can see how things would um, would would uh, would change. So, for example, if none of us were able to be tested, um, then when we went over here, we'd see all those numbers be higher. I'm going to go back to where I was before. And then, but then if we just said like, okay, well, let's assume that kids are lower risk. So let's say we're going to assume that they're like half as likely to have it as the rest of the population. And I do that. Then if you go back in here, you kind of see all these numbers have gone down, right? And you can imagine, of course, that as you modify these numbers, they, those would also go down. All right, so let's return to my, to my baseline. So you've got these, these numbers, um, and then I've multiplied them by these individual specific hospitalization and, and death risk numbers. And then just over here in the calculator, I kind of pull up, um, I, I sometimes people don't, like it's a little hard to think about like what does this number mean? So I've, I've just literally taken one over them to try to convert them to something like a one in blah, blah, blah chance of, of having something because that's, um, I don't know, like, sometimes useful. And then you could go there and you could say, okay, well, let me compare that to some other, you know, some other, uh, some other risk um, that, you know, I, I maybe have a little bit of a of bigger handle, uh, handle on. Um, and, you know, in this example, I mean, again, I like, I don't know if you don't think that these numbers are smaller or big. I think certainly one could make a strong case that, the, that these like death risk numbers are very, are very small. Um, and uh, and you know the the infection risk numbers are certainly less small. You know that's this is in the eye of the beholder a little bit. Okay, so let me say two two last things. So the 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 so one thing is it is not just of course your pod that matters um, or the people you're seeing. It's it's who they might spread it to out in the in the world. Um, and, and that's actually a very, very hard thing to, to model here um, because it's hard to know exactly because the sort of circumstances on the other side are going to be so, so disparate. So, um, so I've basically given, given you a, a way here to, to kind of put in how many infections do you think that if, if this person were to become infected, how many other people would they likely infect? Um, and so I don't know, I've just defaulted it to one, although I don't think that number is, is quite right. Um, you know, you might think, for example, let's say this kid is in, uh, is in in-person school in a pod with, um, you know, 10 other kids. Well, we know from other data um, that, you know, the chance of an infected person spreading to another infected person in in-person school, those numbers from like the North Carolina data are running to maybe four tenths of 1%. And let's say there were 10 kids. So here you could put um, four tenths of 1%. So that would be um, 0. 0.004. That's the, to times 10 people. So that would say kind of you'd expect were that person infected that they would infect an expected 0.04 people. Um, and then this would that would therefore predict um, their um, the, the outside infections, which would be, you know, the chance that they're infected times if they were infected, how many people would they infect it and, and so on um, to sort of see how that would go. So this is something which really you, you kind of need to think a little bit about. And again, you could, there are other things you could do to make that lower. So you say, well, when I get back, I'm going to have my kid tested. Okay, well, that's kind of lowering their infection risk, uh, their infection risk further. Um, and so those are, that's kind of, I'm, this is something you, you want to, there's no substitute for thinking. You want to think, think a little bit about. Um, the, uh, the last thing I will say is like, let's say I go in here and I say, okay, um, actually like surprise, uh, my brother was able to be, um, to be vaccinated. Um, and uh, so he's, we're going to eliminate him from the thing. So one thing is you could actually just, um, just d delete him. Um, for now, I don't want to do that because um, I want to be able to return to return to the spreadsheet. Um, but uh, other than just deleting him, I could actually just replace his case rate with with zero. You say basically, like I'm just going to assume 
that my brother is a is a, a zero person. Um, and then uh, and then when you get into this calculator, um, we can now sort of ignore him completely here. But you can see that the risks for the other people uh, have have gone down because he's been he's been uh, he's been eliminated. Um, so I'm going to return return him to his rightful rightful place here. Um, but again, you know, th that's also going to illustrate that as more of these people get get vaccinated, um, things are going to go uh, things are going to go better. And in fact, um, you know, if we if we kind of eliminated both of the adults, the the risks associated with this um, for the kids are going to be uh, are going to be uh, substantially lower, even if the elimination of those adults doesn't, of course, further lower the uh, the the risk rate. Um, Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit helpful. Um, and uh, I look forward to hearing your feedback, I guess, um, on, uh, on, on all of this. So thanks for watching.